Hey everybody and welcome back to some more All The Mods 3 Expert Mode. Last episode, we were working on setting up a pretty basic logistics pipes system with the request pipe here now allowing us to access all of the items that we have in our chests over there from one centralized location. So anything we want, we no longer have to go through all four chests individually looking for that item. We can just come in here, search for whatever it is that we're after, and then request however many we want of that item, which is hopefully going to make our lives a lot easier and a lot quicker going forward. And speaking of going forward, what I want to work on in today's episode is hopefully completing the first tier of quests in the quest book here. And by completing, I mean getting to this point here where we unlock the ability to head through to the nether. We're probably not going to do all of the uh, optional quests in today's episode, like making a bat box or setting up an all washing plant or upgrading our dynamos, but I think that we can get through to the point where we can get to the nether, which will then unlock the ability for us to start mining things like diamonds, uh, glowstone, quartz, open up a whole bunch of other mods for us to play with, and most importantly, open up tier two here, allowing us to start working with mods like Thomcraft, actual additions, thermal expansion, and a whole host of other mods uh, going forward as well. Well, and so essentially to get through to the nether, all we need to do in today's episode is complete this left side of the quest tree, which is pretty much the beginning of Britannia. And it all starts here with the first quest, unleashing your inner botanist, which wants us to make a pedal apothecary and a 16 floral fertilizer. The floral fertilizer is pretty easy. The recipe has not changed. It is one bone meal and then either a four floral powder of any color or two dandelion yellow and two rose red. Now, thankfully, we are in a biome that is pretty lush with dandelion yellow and rose red uh, i did that the wrong way around there's some dandelion yellow there and uh, quite a bit of rose red over in that direction and a little bit of skimming through jei before the episode showed me that we can get triple the amount of dandelion yellow and rose red by putting all of these flowers into the extractor first and so if we're going to get 16 floor fertilizer that means that we need 32 rose red and 32 dandelion yellow which if we're getting three dye per flower means that we need uh, 11 of each flower to get us going here thankfully i think we have more than enough dandelion yellow and rose red lying about to make that happen it is going to take quite a bit of time to actually uh, process all of these because as you'll know if you've watched any of the previous episodes our extractor is extremely slow pretty much all of our industrial craft two machines at this moment in time are very very slow we do have options available to make them faster. We could, if we wanted to, look into putting, for example, some overclockers into our extractor to boost up the speed at the cost of more power. But I think at this point in time, uh, it's really just more sensible to just put these in and just let them go and work on some other stuff while they're chugging away. We don't really have enough power to uh, facilitate a bunch of overclockers just yet. Our little uh, generator over here isn't really up to snuff when it comes to providing a ton of power to, uh, to all of our machines. And so uh, hopefully that is correct. I did put this in the right machine, right? It goes in the extractor. Yes. So hopefully this works. Okay. So we had a small little server issue there, which was causing my industrial craft machines to uh, temporarily not work. However, now uh, they should be working just fine. Uh, and yep, you can see that very, very slowly, but surely uh, the dandelions here are going to be turned into dandelion yellow. Whilst we wait for those to get done, let's have a look at the recipe for the petal apothecary. This requires four seared stone, two seared stone slabs, and one bucket. I think we have pretty much all of that available to us. We do. We've got quite a nice backlog of seared stone in our chests, and I've also been making a yet more seared stone in our smeltery here as well, trying to keep on top of uh, how much we need, which is actually uh, quite a lot in today's episode, because again, if we look forward a little bit, we're also going to need some living rock, and the living rock recipe has also been tweaked so that now, instead of putting a regular stone around a pure daisy, you have to put seared stone around a pure daisy to get that living rock, and so uh, just a quick word of advice, if you are playing this pack and you're going to start with Britannia, you're going to want to make sure that you have a nice amount of seared stone ready to go for when you actually get started with Britannia here. So now, over in the crafting station, we can craft up some seared stone slabs, and then if we do something like this, we can get our petal apothecary. Nice. Now, it did use up our bucket, which is a little annoying because we do have to actually use a bucket to put water into the petal apothecary. I say that, however, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you can use the petal apothecary with a bowl, like a vanilla Minecraft bowl. Now, unfortunately, we do not have much in the way of planks or wood, and I should really just be searching for this in my uh, request logistics pipe there, but real quick, let me grab a little bit of wood here because before I go out making more buckets, which we are going to have to do at some point in today's episode anyway, but just for the sake of science, I do want to test if uh, we can indeed use a regular Minecraft bowl here. So 
one, two, three, gets us a bowl. And then if we take this and we fill it up with water at the sink, and then, oh, you can't do this. You can't fill a bowl with water, at least not at a sink. Let me try like with regular water. That does work. So you can get a block of water with the uh, the bowl. However, oh gosh, I've spilt it. I would like it back. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's, I'm actually not quite sure which mod it is that adds this ability. Oh no. This was not my intended purpose. I wonder if I'm moving too fast. I do think, I think this works. I really thought this would work. Apparently it doesn't. I'm right clicking. I'm, I've tried dropping it in. Nothing is working there. Um, I do quite like the mechanic there that if you're walking with like a bucket of water in your inventory, you have a chance of like spilling the water. That's pretty cool. Uh, nevertheless, for now, let's put those balls uh, back into the system and let's get going making another bucket so we can actually pick up that water and of course move more water into our uh, petal apothecary. So we'll request some iron. We'll stick that in the smell tray. Let's take a quick look at our extractor. This is going pretty well. However, we are out of fuel in our generator. So we'll also go ahead and grab uh, probably some charcoal here. I think the charcoal is a bit less valuable than the coal right now. The coal is used in a couple of recipes. It's also used to make the coal cook in our coke oven. And uh, so the charcoal, I don't think, is, is quite as valuable and thus is more useful in the generator here. We'll throw our iron in the smeltering, like so. And uh, we can pull that out in plate form. And also, if memory serves me right, I believe that a bucket requires some uninsulated copper cable. It does indeed, which I believe we do have in our system somewhere. We do indeed. We've got three lying around, which is fantastic. Looking ahead again, we also need to get some treated wooden planks. Put that creosote to good use and make some treated wood. This will be used for both immersive engineering and for Britannia. So finally, we get to put this massive stockpile of creosote to good use. Up until now, we've just been taking all of the creosote from our coke oven and storing it in these stone drums. Right now, we have got, what, 16, 32, almost 48 buckets worth of creosote just sitting in these stone drums, waiting to be used, and finally, we have a need for it. So again, much like with the Living Rock having its recipe changed, the recipe for living wood has also been changed. So now, instead of requiring regular wood around a pure daisy, you need that treated wood, which requires the creosote. And so let's grab our iron plates out of here so we can actually make that bucket it, which will allow us to make our first sets of creosote, which is just uh, eight of any wooden plank around a bucket of creosote. And then once we have that, we can also start looking at making our first Batania flowers as well. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at making the Munchju and the Gorillamus, Gomorillus. I'm actually not quite sure uh, how you pronounce that. Let me know in the comment section if you are uh, a Batania expert or maybe just a linguist who knows uh, how to pronounce uh, this word right here. Uh, for now, I'm going to just call it the food plant because it uses food to make mana, uh, but we'll get to that later on in the episode. For now, let's make a little bit of treated wood and complete this quest right here. And let's also see if we're anywhere near closer. And also let's move this uh, into our petal apothecary for now. And yes, we have all of our dandelion yellow that we need. We'll throw in the poppies. I'm only going to do the 11 that we actually need here, because for now, um, I don't really want to be using our power for anything uh, that we don't need to be using it for. Um, also, we do need bones to actually make this work. Thankfully, uh, we do have five bones in the system here. And in fact, I don't think that's quite going to be enough, right? Because we need to get 16 bone meal to make this work. It's one bone meal uh, per floor fertilizer. It is. Do we have one piece of bone meal in here? We do. Fantastic. So we'll take that last piece there. I don't really think that we're going to need 16 floor fertilizer in today's episode. However, uh, just in the interest of completing the quest, we do have to get that 16 floor fertilizer and we do have to actually complete the quest. It's not just good enough for us to go through and do all this without completing the quests because right now the only thing stopping us from going to the nether is this quest right here. This quest allows us to actually get to the nether. If you don't complete this quest, then even if you build another pot, you can't actually get through to the nether. The nether is locked until this quest is completed. And so we do have to actually complete all of the quests that connect to the Obsidian Breaker and then finally to the Game Stages quest there. Uh, that's just to stop people from kind of cheesing the pack and going straight through uh, to the Nether without doing any of this stuff here, which you could do in, uh, in earlier versions of the pack. Uh, this still chugging away slowly but surely. While we wait for that, let's have a look at the recipes for the Munch Dew and for the Food Flower. So the Food Flower is definitely the more expensive of the two. It requires a bunch of Mystical Petals as well as a whole lasagna and one donut. Now, thankfully, both the lasagna and the donut are fairly easy to make. The donut requires eight cooked dough, which you can make by cooking, you guessed it, dough. And the dough can be made by crafting together four wheat and one bucket of water. So the uh, donut there, pretty easy stuff. The lasagna, on the other hand, a little bit trickier. 
It also requires some of that cooked dough, but this time it requires it with ground beef, which is fairly easy. It's a regular steak crafted into ground beef, a tomato sauce, which is one tomato smelted, and then cheese, which is six buckets of milk crafted into four little triangles of cheese right there. And then the other flour that we need, we have to make both of these, is the munch dew. This one, much, much easier, requiring a bunch of petals with a leaf fletchling. The leaf fletchling is from Tinker's Construct and shouldn't be too difficult for us to make. It's basically uh, the same as any other part that you would make in Tinker's Construct. So over here in the stencil table, you would grab the fletchling, which is, I think this one right here, it is. And then with that inside of the pot builder, you'd put that in there with some leaves. Leaves, of course, we can get by shearing a nearby tree, which thankfully we have a lot of due to our proximity to this forest. And so if we just go and break a few of these here, we'll get a few leaves, which we can then put in our pot builder. And boom, we have a leaf fletchling. Nice. So that is pretty much that taken care of. Let's go ahead and sleep here because the downside of being next to that forest is that a lot of mobs do spawn and we are at a slightly higher than average risk of getting blown up by a creeper if we do let uh, the night linger on a bit too long. But nevertheless, we now have uh, 33 rose red and 33 dandelion yellow. And so if we do something like this and this, we can get the 16 floor fertilizer and finally complete the quest of unleashing our inner botanist. So next up is the quest for making the mana producing flowers, the food flower and the munch dew, as well as this flower right here, the pure daisy, which uh, as you saw earlier, is going to allow us to make the living rock and the living wood from seared stone and from treated wood. Both of these require some kind of petal, which of course is where the floral fertilizer comes in. So for those who don't know, the floral fertilizer can be used to generate mystical flowers. If you uh, use it on the ground, just like you would regular bone meal, it will go ahead and spawn in a couple of mystical flowers. We've got a gray, a purple, a cyan and an orange. Now, in order to make the pure daisy, we need four mystical white petals. Petals are made by crafting the flower, so one flower equals four petals. And then the munch dew requires two lime, two red, and one green, with the food flower requiring two gray, two yellow, and one red. And so, um, one downside to these flowers is that they can start to clog up your inventory quite quickly. Now, thankfully, Britannia does add a workaround to this. And uh, before we get to that, let me quickly eat some of this bacon jerky here. And uh, also while we're at it, let me go ahead and just kind of harvest this bacon jerky that we have on our drying racks. And whilst we're at it, let's also uh, grab some replacement pork chops and, and get those drying as well, just so we have uh, even more food available in the future when we, uh, when we start to get hungry. But uh, back on track, we can actually make what is called the uh, flower pouch from Batania, this guy right here. Fairly easy to make. It's four of any colored wool and then one of any colored petal. I think we do have a fair bit of wool. I'm hoping that you can mix and match wool. I'm not entirely sure that you can, but I would assume that you can. And so let's go ahead and grab a petal of any color. And then if we do this and this, it works. Nice. And so essentially the flower pouch allows you to store flowers. It can store, I think, up to a stack of each flower. And the really neat thing is that the flowers should automatically make their way into the flower pouch. So if we do this and we break these flowers, instead of going into our inventory, these flowers should go directly into the flower pouch, like so. Nice. And so now we're basically going to go ahead and put down really all of this floral fertilizer. I'm a little concerned about the lack of white flowers that we're getting right now, we do need to get at least one mystical white flower, preferably two, because I would like to set up two pure daisies. And actually, looking ahead a little bit, the mana spreader also requires a block of mystical white petals. So we do need uh, quite a few white petals if we can get them. Thankfully, Batania does have a, a built-in method of getting more petals if you already have one of them. However, that method does require uh, the use of vanilla bone meal. And as you just saw, we used most of our bone meal in the making of this floral fertilizer. So really, we could do with uh, hopefully just getting quite a few mystical white flowers from these last few pieces of floral fertilizer. Unfortunately, that has not been the case. We got uh, a whopping one mystical white flower from 16 floral fertilizer, which is a bit of a pain considering we got 10 mystical red flowers uh, from that same floral fertilizer, but nevertheless, we can make it work. So if you don't have enough of any one kind of petal, what you can do is you can grab some bone meal from your system if you have some, uh, or go kill some skeletons if you don't have any bone meal to get some. And what we can then do is craft the mystical white flower into the respective petals. And then from there, if we head on out to the grass, we can plant that petal bone meal it up into a nice tall mystical white flower. And then if you break that with shears, you will get 
a tall mystical white flower that you can then craft into four mystical white petals. And so uh, essentially you turn one mystical white petal and one bone meal into four mystical white petals for a net gain of three mystical white petals. Now, as you can see, we don't really have that much bone meal. And so in total, we managed to get up to 11 mystical white petals, which is not quite enough. We are going to have to go and, and get some more throughout the course of today's episode because we need to do one, two, three, and four just to get the pure daisy. And then we need at least nine more to get the mana spreader. So we'll have to come back to that uh, in a second. But again, for those who are unfamiliar, the way that the petal apothecary works is you put in all of the required ingredients. So for example, for the pure daisy, you put in all four mystical white petals. And then all you have to do after that is throw in any kind of seed like so, and you get the pure daisy. And it really can be any seed. I threw in, I think, an immersive engineering hemp seed just then, but you can use like vanilla Minecraft seeds. Any kind of seed will work. But now that we have our pure daisy, we can put this down, we can surround it with these treated wooden planks. And after about 60 seconds, these treated wooden planks should turn into some living wood. And there we go. We now have eight living wood available to harvest. Nice. And of course, we can do the same thing with seared stone. We can put that down to get ourselves some living rock, which we will, of course, do. And while we wait for this seared stone here to turn into a living rock, let's go ahead and see if we don't have what it takes to make um, at least one of these um, mana generating flowers, because I think we have everything it takes to make the munch dew here. We just need two lime petals, two red petals, one green petal, and one leaf fletchling. The leaf fletchling we have uh, inside of here, we have at least two lime, uh, two red, and then we don't have any green. Oh, that is incredibly unfortunate luck on our part. Uh, there are some Batania flowers and, ooh, there's actually, oh, that's very lucky. There are some mystical white flowers over, uh, just over here, available to, uh, to harvest in the world, which is very fortunate. They are quite common, so I guess it's not that lucky, really. You can uh, probably find a good range of flowers. There's also some cyan here as well. Uh, just by exploring around in the world, that is going to give us, I think, enough white petals to at least get our mana spreader going, which is very nice indeed. I don't think that we have any green mystical flowers around here. There's some brown, there's some purple. There might be a green, potentially, close by, but I think our best bet here is really going to be to kind of wait for nightfall, try and kill some more skeletons, try and get some more bone meal, uh, use that bone meal to get some more floor fertilizer, and then use that floor fertilizer uh, to get even more mystical flowers, a nice range of mystical flowers. And so I'm going to go away, guys. I'm going to go and uh, try and find maybe some green mystical petals. If not, I'm going to wait for nightfall, kill some skeletons, try and get some bone meal, and try and get some green flowers that way. Uh, and I'll be back in a second. Might as well also grab this uh, wheat while we're here as well. We're going to need that for the uh, the dough going forward. Really should set up our own wheat farm, I think, at some point. But for now, we can get away with uh, just stealing what the villagers have. I think 15 wheat is going to be enough to get us uh, both the lasagna and the, uh, the donuts. Okay, so one or two skeletons later, and we have uh, two bones in our inventory here. And I actually realized whilst I was killing the skeletons that I was a fool earlier on in today's episode, because what we can actually do is take our bones and put them into the macerator. And that is going to get us five bone meal per bone, as opposed to the default three that you get from crafting. And so we could have gotten a 25 bone meal at the start of the episode, as opposed to the 15 that we got, if we had have just put the bones into the macerator, as opposed to just crafting them directly. But you live and learn, uh, we now have a significantly larger amount of bone meal per bone, which is uh, very nice indeed. Of course, now we don't have uh, quite enough rose red or dandelion yellow, but thankfully, uh, we do have a good number of mystical flowers. And as I mentioned at the start of the episode, if you have mystical flowers already, you can use the floral powder from those mystical flowers to make more floral fertilizer. Uh, to do that, you do need a pestle and mortar, uh, but thankfully the pestle and mortar is pretty easy to make. And I think if memory serves me right, and if the recipe has not been changed, which it might well have, uh, the recipe is one bowl, one stick, and one plank. So let me quickly see if uh, my memory is correct here. I think it is something like this. However, this appears to be incorrect. Oh, I was so close. It's the uh, this way around. There we go. So now if you craft up the pestle and mortar with the mystical petals, you can then get some floral powder. Uh, I'm not going to use our white floral powder because we do need that for crafting, but I will happily go ahead and take a good chunk of these red flowers out here and use those instead. And then once you have those, just like before, we can craft four of these with some bone meal to get us some more floral fertilizer. Nice. Now let's see. We only got three. We can, of course, get more if we want to, but let's see if we can't get at least one green flower 
Still zero green flowers. Okay. What I'm going to do then, guys, in that case, is I'm going to harvest this living rock. I'm going to go away. I'm going to uh, craft up more floral fertilizer, and I'm going to keep using it until we get at least one mystical green petal. And again, I'll be back in a second. And thankfully, two pieces of floral fertilizer later, and we have our first mystical green flower. Nice. Now, thankfully as well, we also need just the one mystical green petal here. And so we can keep one of these for growing more in the future. And we can use the one that we have over in our petal apothecary, uh, which does require a little bit of water, but that's easy enough from our sink here. So I believe, if memory serves me right, it was one green as well as two lime and two red. Uh, and of course, our leaf fletching here. So one red gets us two petal, uh, one lime gets us two petal as well. And so lime, red, lime and red and fletchling and then of course the last piece of the puzzle uh, is i guess a tomato seed nice and that gets us the munch dew the munch dew for those who don't know is a mana flower that will generate mana if you feed it leaves so you put it down either near trees or you can of course harvest the leaves ahead of time with shears and then put those leaves down next to the uh, the plant it will then eat those leaves and produce mana the mana can then be sent through a mana spreader to a mana pool which you can then use to craft up something like mana steel which is what we're going to use to make this mana steel pickaxe head which we can then use on our own pickaxe to allow us to break obsidian to be able to make another portal to get through to the nether but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves in order to complete the quests we do have to get uh, at least eight more living rock and eight more living wood and so again before we use any of those uh, i do want to get that up and running because as i mentioned earlier didn't want to do that uh, that's not what i want to do there but that's fine we can work with that later but as i mentioned earlier we do have to complete every single quest if we want to get through to the nether in today's episode which is of course the end goal uh, while we're waiting for this next batch of seed stone to go though we can actually start to look at making the lasagna and making the donut which hopefully shouldn't be uh, too difficult for us we're also going to get a little bit more wood for the uh, the creosote for the next round of living wood but that's a problem for future isaac for now let's grab another bucket of water and then let's craft up that bucket of water with four wheat and then from there we can take that dough and we can throw it into our electronic furnace uh, we don't need to smell the iron just yet and while we're waiting for that let's also do that same thing all over again because we're going to need at least two lots of this uh, because we need eight of course for the donuts and then we need another six i think it is for the lasagna and speaking of the lasagna, the lasagna also, uh, of course, requiring, and I'm going to use two furnaces here just to make things faster, uh, requiring beef, which I think we might have. Do we have any steak? We do not. Uh, do we have any uncooked beef? We do. So if we grab that and smelt it into steak, we can then craft it into with that uh, ground beef that we need for the lasagna. And then finally, we also need a tomato. We do have some tomato seeds lying around, so that is not a problem. And all we need to do now is take those tomato seeds, of course, over and plant them down. For that, I am going to need some kind of uh, hood device. Thankfully, we do have uh, many, many sticks in our inventory, and I think we can make a, a vanilla Minecraft hoe in this pack, which uh, we can. Some packs uh, make you go through Tinker's Construct, which uh, arguably is better. You know, we could have made the matic there from Tinker's Construct. We probably will at, at some point in the future. Uh, but for now, in the interest of speed, we will craft up our donuts and we'll go and plant down our first tomato seed. And again, in the interest of speed, I am going to use a little bit of bone meal here just to speed things up because we do only need uh, the one tomato to get the uh, food flour up and running. And because our regular furnace is out of power and because our electric furnace, I think, is a little bit faster, I am going to uh, use this guy instead. So we'll throw the tomato in. Once that's done, we'll also throw in the raw beef. And of course, the final thing that we need that we actually don't have is cheese. Now, to get cheese, we need six buckets of milk. And right now, we only have the one bucket. So if we're going to make five more buckets, that means that we need at least 15 more iron. Uh, iron doesn't double in the smeltery, so we are going to need 15 iron ore here. So we'll throw all of that in like so, let that smelt away. And then we're, of course, going to have to find a bunch of cows. Now, thankfully, uh, because it's been such a long time since the last episode of this pick, and because we are on the Gaming on Caffeine Patreon server, there are a few other people who have been playing on the server and who have built sizable bases. For example, uh, Renfia85 has built uh, this large marble base in the distance here. And I did a bit of scouting before the episode started, and he actually has a nice set of animals, a nice couple of pens of animals uh, available. And so I think, given that he is AFK at the moment and has been AFK for a little while now, I think we can probably get away with uh, sneaking up there and, uh, and just taking some of the milk from his cows. I don't think uh, that he's going to miss those. 
And not too long later, we now have what it takes to make five more buckets, taking us up to six in total. But I spoke too soon because despite being AFK for about 40 minutes now, uh, as soon as I said that he is AFK and we can steal his milk, I think Ren Fear could hear me because as you can see here in the chat, he is no longer AFK. This happened like maybe a minute after I cut away having said that we can steal his milk. And so unfortunately, um, I think we still can, but we're probably gonna have to ask. So uh, do you mind if I milk some of your cows? Smiley face. It would be quite rude <laughs> if he said no here, but uh, it's quite possible. We might have to go out and try and, uh, try and find our own cows, potentially. It's also quite possible that he has gone AFK again in the time since he un afk would like it takes a little bit of time before the game shows them as being AFK. Oh, he is here, okay. And he is kind enough to allow us to milk his cows. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, you are you are too kind. Your base is very majestic. I love this uh, big glass panel that he's got in the front here. Here we go. So I'm gonna steal some of this uh, this luxurious cow milk that he is, uh, he is hoarding here. There we go. Uh, how do you like our little setup here? It's, it's nice. It's, a, it's very nice. Very nice. I like the big window. There we go. I'm, I'm a big fan of this big glass, uh, big glass window he's got here on the, uh, on the marble pillar. I also, I'm also a big fan of this little farm here. It's, it's not the biggest farm in the world, but it's got like, I like the way he separated it out into little sections. It's, it's, it's very nice. It's very nice. Say hi to YouTube. While he uh, says hi to YouTube, I'm gonna head back and we're gonna see if we can't craft up this lasagna here. Cause I think we now have uh, everything it takes to make the uh, the food plant, right? And once we have that, uh, I did go ahead and put down some creosote so we can actually go and get the living wood, uh, the requirement for the quest. And then once we have that, we should have everything it takes finally to make a mana steel pickaxe head. And then from there, finally be able to go through to the nether. We're very, very close to getting there. There's just a few little things left to do here. So let's grab this living wood. Let's head on back over to our crafting station and see if we can't craft up a little bit of cheese. One, two, three, four, five, and six gets us that four cheese right there. And then if memory serves me right, it is cheese, tomato sauce, uh, beef, which is of course the ground variety, like so, which we're gonna put in on the left and then Cooked dough, like so, gets us a lasagna. And then if we look again at the, uh, the food flower here, we need two gray, two yellow, and one red. I think we have all of that, hopefully. Uh, so yellow, gray, you gotta make sure you check between light gray and regular gray, there are two types of gray. And red, of course, at the end there. Uh, we only need the one red, but that is fine. So we'll take red, we'll take yellow, we'll take gray. We will put in over here, of course, some water, like so, and then one red petal, two gray petals, two yellow petals, one whole lasagna, and finally one regular donut like so. And of course, any kind of seed, we'll use a regular wheat seed this time. And boom, we have the food flower. Nice. So looking back in the quest here, we now have one more quest to go before the mana steel pickaxe head. And that quest is to make a diluted mana pool and a mana spreader. Thankfully, both of these, I don't think are too difficult to make. The mana pool requires one iron plate and then a bunch of living rock. Thankfully, we do have 16 living rock, which is more than enough for what we need here. So we'll craft up some living rock slabs and then craft up that first diluted mana pool, which is like a normal mana pool, but it can just hold less mana. And then on top of that, we need the mana spreader, which requires that block of mystical white petals that we mentioned earlier in the episode. We do have 11 lying around. So requesting nine of those is fine. On top of that, we need six living wood and one seared stone, seared stone. I think we do have in the system, but I'm also just gonna pull it out of the smelter because we have it available to us right here. And while we wait for that to pull out, I'm also going to do a bit of an inventory dump because we have got a ton of stuff in our inventory uh, that we really do not need to be carrying around with us at this moment in time. All of these petals are not really useful right now. I don't think we need any more living rock slabs. Definitely don't need any more ground beef, cheese, or seeds, or a glass bottle, or any donuts really. So. Clear up a nice bit of inventory space, head on back over, grab a white petal block, craft up a mana spreader, and just to make life a little easier, I'm also gonna go ahead and make ourselves a wand of the forest. And I do that just as I've thrown away the petals, which we really could use right about now. Although we do only have one left of each of these, and I'd like to keep as many uh, white petals as possible. So you know what, we'll grab a black petal because we've got a lot of black flowers, and we'll also grab a purple petal because we've got a lot of purple flowers. And uh, the way that you make a one of the forest is three of these living wood twigs with any two 
colors. Uh, you can use the same color. Any any two petals will work. Uh, and the color that you choose is reflected in the one that you get. So we have a, a lovely black and purple one here. And then now, if we head on outside, we can actually start to generate mana. So the thing that we're trying to make is mana steel. Mana steel is right here, and it's made in the mana pool with a tiny little bit of mana and one refined iron ingot. Now, in order to make the mana steel pickaxe head, we need two ingots worth of mana steel, and so we need two refined iron. We've got 39 in the system here, so that is definitely more than enough. And I think to make my life a little easier, for now we're gonna go with the munch dew because we're right next to a forest, and I'm gonna put our battalion set up for now in this forest, because what the munch dew should do is it should just start to eat all of the leaves around it and turning those into mana. So we will put down the munch dew. We'll then put down the mana spreader near it, like so. You can hear the leaves being destroyed as this guy fills up with mana. If you right click with the one of the forest, you can see how much mana is in it. Right now, it is almost full. Once it's full, it will stop eating leaves. As you can hear, no more leaves being eaten. And so now, if we shift right click and shift right click, we're going to link the munch dew to the mana spreader. You'll see there's now a little tick next to that mana spreader icon when we're hovering over the munch dew. And then from there, we can put down our diluted mana pool like so. And if we do the same again, shift right click and shift right click, that mana spreader is then going to start putting that mana into the diluted mana pool, which is very quickly filling up with mana. And from there, if we drop our refined iron ingot into the mana pool, we get mana steel. Nice. And of course, once we have two mana steel, we can finally make our way back over to the smeltering, throw that in there. And the only thing left to do, I think, is to make a pickaxe cast, a pickaxe head cast, so we can actually make the mana steel pickaxe head, add it to our pickaxe, make the obsidian portal, and head on through to the nether. So for the pickaxe cast, we're of course going to need some gold. You could also use uh, aluminium brass, but we're gonna use gold for now because we don't have any aluminium brass. On top of that, we're also going to need a pickaxe head to, uh, to cast as well. And I think the easiest one for us to do here is uh, a wooden pickaxe head. So if we craft some uh, dark oak planks here and head on over to our Tinger's Construct part builder, what we should be able to do is pickaxe head pattern with some dark oak planks that gets us this guy, the wooden pickaxe head. And then if we put that into one of our casting tables and pour some molten gold over it, that's gonna get us a pickaxe head cast, at which point we can then pull in some molten mana steel, which is gonna cool down into a mana steel pickaxe head which we can then take over to our tool station, craft with our regular vitrified sand pickaxe to finally get a mana steel pickaxe, which uh, has a mining level of mana steel, which for those unfamiliar is able to mine obsidian. Uh, it also comes with a boost to mining speed from 5.5 up to seven and a small boost to durability as well up from 465 to 605. And so now all we need to do is find some obsidian. Uh, we do have lava just over in that direction there. And so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sleep. I'm gonna grab a bucket of water. We're gonna head on over to our local pool of lava, mine up at least 10 obsidian, come back, and we should, in theory, be able to make our very first nether portal. Before we do though, we do actually have one more quest to complete because we haven't beaten uh, the right side of the quest book here. We actually need to make one carbon plate. The carbon plate is made by compressing one raw carbon mesh, which is made by crafting raw carbon fibers, which you can make with four pulverized coal. So we need eight pulverized coal to make this work. I think we do have eight coal in our system right now. We do indeed, so let's request those. And then what we'll do is we'll put those in the macerator and hopefully by the time that I get back from my trip to the lava pool, we should have enough obsidian to build a portal and hopefully enough pulverized coal to make the carbon plate. And a little bit of rather slow obsidian mining later, we now have 10 obsidian, the perfect amount to build a uh, cornerless nether portal. And so we are missing a little bit of uh, cobblestone. We can't build this uh, without those corner pieces. Uh, while we're in here, let's go and grab our hopefully fully macerated coal, which we can then craft into two raw carbon fiber, and then again into one raw carbon mesh, which we can then put into our compressor. And once we're done building our nether portal, we should hopefully have the final Industrial Craft 2 quest completed, which in turn should finally allow us to head on through to the nether, opening up the next tier of quests and allowing us to progress on with the pack. So over here, we'll throw down some cobblestone, like so. We'll throw down our last two pieces of obsidian. I think we do already have a flint and steel in the system, and so we shouldn't have to make another one of those. I'm not gonna keep the cobblestone corners because I don't think that they look particularly good. Uh, in the future, I will probably just go and get a little bit more obsidian to round out this uh, portal here. We could definitely do with putting some upgrades onto our pickaxe. We do have 
five modifier slots available to add things uh, to the pickaxe and make it much better than it currently is. Specifically, I'm looking at things like redstone because really right now, even with a mining speed of seven, which is higher than the mining speed of like 5.5, that we had before it's still a very slow pickaxe especially mining the uh, obsidian it's really really slow and making it a bit faster being able to mine that obsidian uh, would be very nice indeed but for now carbon plate complete and that means that the only quest left uh, before the nether quest is the game stages quest which we complete by just ticking this box here and then you've got to click the uh, command box here if you don't click this you won't be able to go through to the nether but now we have unlocked the nether stage as you can see in the bottom left there and finally we can head on through into the nether we just need to grab our flint and steel, which apparently we don't have. I really thought we did make one of those, but nevertheless, I will uh, make a replacement one. It's not a particularly difficult recipe. I'm actually fairly certain that the recipe is the default Minecraft flint and steel. Apparently, I am mistaken. Oh, they've changed it. It now does require that carbon plate. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Uh, it also requires one refined iron as well. I'm fairly certain that's new because I think earlier on in the pack's development, you could get to the nether uh, without completing these quests because the flint and steel recipe was just the default Minecraft flint and steel recipe. Uh, this is fine. We have both of the ingredients required. And so now that we have a flint and steel, we can head on over finally to our brand spanking new obsidian portal, light it on fire. And because we unlocked that game stage, we should now finally be able to head on through to the nether and thus begin the next stage of the mod pack. Here we go. We have spawned in uh, some kind of cave, both good and bad, I guess. We're not really near any uh, any lava or any mobs or any like nether fortresses, but at the same time, uh, any hostilities that are in the nether are uh, not here either, which is quite nice. Uh, but with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's episode there. Next time, we'll come back. We'll start looking to see if we can't find some of the glowstone, some of the nether quartz, some of that diamond ore that we know is in here. But again, for now, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video and you want to see more all the mods through expert mode in the future, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos go out. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>